Right, Righto legends, something a little bit different from my channel today. As mentioned in the title, I'm going to be talking about the Cranky Crab. I get asked a lot of questions about the crab, so I'm going to run through my two favourite situations on when to use them and the exact technique I use. I also get asked a lot about the tackle I use, so I will add that in at the end. I'm going to play some video, do some voiceover at the same time so you get a good understanding of what I'm doing. And hopefully it can help one or two of you out to be a little bit more effective with the crab in the future. I will mention I am sponsored by Crank Out, but that really doesn't have anything to do with this video. I use the crab a lot, I love the product, and people see that so they ask me a lot of questions. So hopefully I can tick one or two of them questions off the list today. So we won't waste any time, we'll get straight into it. Let's go. Here we have some footage from the 2021 round one of the Tasmanian Brim Classic. We're fishing the run out tide so we've just got the boat spot locked into the current and as you can see I've cast in close to one of the poles and it doesn't take long for a fish to pick up the crab. Fishing the crabs in current like this the fish tend to pick it up on the drop well before the crab reaches the bottom. That was a pretty handy upgrade late in the day and as you can see I was pretty happy about it. You want to be casting as close as possible to the poles just like in this video here. As the crab hits the water, I'm giving it plenty of slack line to make a very natural drift back towards the boat. And again, it only takes a couple of seconds for a brim to come and pick the crab up on the drop. All you are trying to imitate is a crab falling off the pole and drifting down the water column naturally. So keep a little bit of slack in the line, and when you see that bite, pull the fish away from the structure as fast as possible. Another point to make is, if there's no tide moving past the structure, I like to use the lighter weight 50mm crab, which have a slower sink rate, letting them look more natural when they're drifting down the water column. Once the crab hits the bottom, I generally give it 10 or 15 seconds before I give the crab a slight twitch. I'll give it another 10 or 15 seconds of undisturbed time. If I haven't had a take, then I'll simply move on to the next bit of structure. Right. There's nothing too advanced about my crab technique on a flat. Pretty simple, this is what I do 99% of the time. Throw it out, let it hit the bottom, and then just start a slow roll back. I will mix up the speeds a little bit, but that's about it. Just basically a slow roll back of the boat. <laughs> On cue. <laughs> that couldn't have been better timing. When I have hooked a fish, I'll go quite easy on the flat. There's nothing to bust you off, there's no reason to go too hard. Crabs too have fairly small trebles, so it's a good idea just to let them go if they want to go. If they shake their head, use your arm a bit to assist the rod to take up the bulk of their head shakes. Now that I've found a fish on the flat, most of the time there's going to be more around, so I'll hit spot lock or I'll power pole down and then just continue to pick the place apart. Fish out the side of the boat, fish out the front of the boat. It's just all about covering the ground with the crab. And there's my point about taking it easy on the flat. I'm using the 50 mil glow crab here at the moment, but I, I will mix up colours a bit. If I notice that I'm missing fish, like they're not quite committing to it enough, or I'm just pinning them in the side of the lip, I will mix up the colours. You want to be breaking down the flat more than anything. Um, if you see anything a little bit out of the ordinary, it's probably best to spend a little bit more extra time on that. Just a variation in sand colour, a bit of weed, if there's a lone sort of tree or something on the flat, they're worth spending a little bit more time on. And the fish obviously move around quite a bit on the flat, so putting the power pole down or hitting spot lock for 10 minutes and just constantly casting, it's not a terrible idea. If you come across brim digs, they can be great places to start. I'll add a little video of one in here. So obviously if you come across them digs, the fish are feeding off the bottom, so that's a really good sign and a really good starting point. 
If you're not seeing any brim digs, don't be discouraged. They might, the fish might be feeding on bait fish. If there's no digs, it's not saying the fish aren't there. And if you do find some brim digs and there's no fish currently feeding in the area, they will at some stage in the tide. So you could stick it out or you could come back later on to fish them. I have a few casts over this way, there's a bit of, bit of, bit of variation in the bottom. And the current is actually coming from behind us, pushing towards the front of the boat. So, and what I was going to say is it's probably best to cast to the side of the boat. Let the crab naturally move its way around in a bit of an arc towards the front of the boat. That's what you want, a good solid hook up in the side of the mouth, just like that. <laughs> so again, cast out the side of the boat, with the tide pushing towards the front of the boat. We'll take up the slack and just maintain that little bit of contact with the crab while the crab works its way around towards the front of the boat. Same as the structure video, you just want the crab to look natural. If you wind your crab up and it's been rolled over like that, fair chance the fish has tapped it and you haven't realised. I've just sort of picked it up by the claw and flipped it over. Now that I've caught a couple of fish in this area and they're only small, I will move on. I will leave fish to try to find bigger fish. I've done it before in tournaments and it's brought me a bit unstuck, but I'm only social fishing here today, so nothing to lose really. All right, this is the perfect place for me to start fishing a crab on the flat. I've got the wind at my back, nice and shallow I've seen a few brim digs um, there's a little bit of different colored sand in closer so I can sort of spend a little bit of time on that as well I'm just gonna make my way along the flat and hopefully pick a couple up just realized he's hooked There's that last fish off the flat there behind me. Um, he's only just sort of pinned there in the corner, corner of the mouth. He's a much better fish than what I've been catching. But it just goes to show, it's just that very light bite and you've just got to set the hooks so gently and try not to pull it away from him. Righto legends, the only thing left to go through is the tackle that I use to fish crabs. So in the man-made structure video, this is the rod I was using. It's one of the new infeeds from Daiwa. It's the Z model, which is the middle of the range. Uh, six foot four, one to four kilos. So being six foot four, it's nice and short for when you're in tight cover like we was, but it's not too short that you can't still use it out in the open. You'll see at the end of the sand flats video that I was using this rod out in the open, so. You can still make a reasonable cast with it, but at the same time, it's nice to use around that tighter structure. In the sand flats clip, this is the main rod I was using. It's another one of the infeeds from Daiwa. It is from the base model range, so they're only 189 bucks. Great all-round rod for fishing minnows, plastics, crabs. So if you are going to buy a rod for fishing crabs, I would recommend this one. It's actually the same rod I was using the other day to catch snapper out of my boat. I was using 5 inch and 3.2 inch plastics with 3.8 jig heads. So it really goes to show what a versatile rod that is. As far as leader goes, it really depends on the conditions. I'll either use 6 pound if it's in the tighter, more structure based stuff. Or I'll use 4 pound if I'm out in the open. I like to use a nice long leader, 2 rod lengths at least. That way you've got a good bit of stretch so you don't pull so many hooks. And you've got that bit of protection if you're fishing around structure. The last thing I want to mention is crab storage. So I get a lot of messages saying my crab legs are bent up, what do I do? So you actually can pour hot water on them and straighten them out a bit. Uh, or you can just get a split foam case like this and never really have to worry about it. The best thing to do is leave your crabs in the original packaging until you go to use them. And then after they've been used, give them a wash. Put them in this split foam case and you shouldn't have too many dramas. I think that's really it. Fishing crabs is quite simple once you get the hang of it 
and obviously they're in a very very effective tool when used in the right situation hope you enjoyed the video hope you got something out of it and i'll see you very soon